scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Yesterday, we began to discuss the dynamics of the realm of the spirit, I stated a few things that I would like to, by way of a recap, just um, point out. Number one, that man was created with the ability to relate with this realm and also relate with the realm of the spirit. Number two, that God is spirit. And that information already suggests that you cannot deal with him in the flesh. You will have to be spiritual. And your spirit would have to be alive to relate with God. And we did agree that the realm of the spirit is dimensional. That there are planes and there are dimensions in the realm of the spirit. I did say yesterday... That the physical realm is only a child that was birthed by and from the realm of the spirit this is very important that everything you see in the physical world came from the realm of the spirit and that means to alter anything from this realm you will have to reach down from the realm where it came from to alter realities and that the bible tells us that nothing in this realm is permanent it's a very hopeful revelation so that whatever you do not like there is a possibility of reaching into the realm of the spirit to make adjustments there and deliver what you have adjusted to this realm here and now this is where the dominion of the saints lie in their ability to alter realities and compel them to look like the Christ are we together and um, we examined very briefly prayer as one of the keys that helps us to maximize our dual nature. That prayer is one of the provisions that was made available to the saints by which we can tap into realities from the realm of the spirit. Um, it's a very vast subject. Sad I didn't do justice to it because prayer is a broad subject that can take us weeks to really cover the dimensions that are captured there in prayer. Prayer does many things. Brings transformation, access, fellowship. We tap into the wisdom of God. The Bible says we speak this wisdom among them that are mature. The hidden wisdom that the princes of this world did not, did not know. Then um, and so on and so forth. So I want to start this morning by challenging the fact that If we continue to walk in the illusion that things will just happen in our lives just because God is in heaven and he should take responsibility over the outcome of our lives, our experiences in this kingdom would be barren and frustrating. Are we together? Yes. I have respectfully challenged that thought for many years in the body of Christ that the believer has a participatory role to play 
as far as seeing the manifestation of the kingdom the power and the glory of god is concerned and i pray that god will help us this morning the realm of the spirit operates by spiritual laws job 38 and verse 33 please pay attention the realm of the spirit operates by spiritual laws he says please give us king james if we can have it do you know the ordinances of heaven knowest thou the ordinances of heaven this was job when the lord came to him in response to his predicament he was so frustrated couldn't understand what was happening in his life and the bible says he summoned god and when god came they began to discuss the mysteries of this realm and the lord asked job a question he said do you know the ordinances of heaven question one then if you do know them can thou set the dominion thereof in the earth do you know by what laws heaven governs itself do you know why darkness does not prevail in heaven do you know why God does not have to carry a mobile throne moving around heaven to judge obedience? Yes, disobedience is judged immediately or to judge disobedience. He does not have to move around supervising the angels to see that they are not rebels. And yet whatever looks like rebellion is judged immediately. By what mystery does that happen? That in heaven there is no night. There is no morning. By what mystery does that happen? And it says they are called the ordinances of heaven. That means this heaven that you see is regulated by laws. And then it says, if you know those laws, can you set their dominion? Can you reproduce those laws in the earth? Because if you can, then your earth will look like heaven. Are we together now so there are spiritual laws people do not just rise in this kingdom people do not just become wealthy people do not just become powerful people do not just become influential no a generation does not just love people there's no such thing as luck all that is just nonsense these are exact spiritual laws that can be understood and I pray in the name of Jesus that as we examine one or two of these laws that the Lord will grant you access to these keys and that as you engage them your life will be nothing short of a wonder amen and amen are we in agreement laws of the spirit number one the law of faith these are the laws that activate the realm of the spirit the supernatural we must be taught how to participate with the realm of the spirit the law of faith numbers chapter 23 please and verse 19 when we have it projected i'd like us to read it together numbers 23 and verse 19 numbers 23 and verse 19 ready read please god is not a man stop remember we discussed this yesterday that god became a man God is not a man. If you say God is not a man, it means he must submit to his creator. All men submit to their creator. So if you say God is a man, the person you should worship is not him because he has become a creature. Hallelujah. So God is not a man that he should lie. This is an information about men. God is taking away shock from your life already that when you meet men, this possibility exists. He didn't say bad men. God is not a man. That means in the character of every man is a tendency to lie. Now we're discussing faith. Please follow me. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? This is a very powerful information about God. That God is not a man that he should lie. That means every time you hear God speak, 
this revelation should be at the back of your mind that the one speaking is not joking this is an attestation of god's integrity are we together now god is not a man he does not have the possibility of lying. let me tell you the bible did not say that he cannot lie if god by mistake calls me a woman i will change immediately so lying is getting something wrong that ability is not in him he can't say this is light and then it does not become light so whether it's a mistake or whatever it is when he says it it will become what he said so the possibility of saying something and seeing another thing is not in god that's what the bible is saying so if he calls your pain joy it changes immediately if he calls your tomorrow blessed that tomorrow has to become blessed because god has spoken this is called integrity the character of being consistent are we together god is not a man that he should lie hebrews 11 and verse 6 this is the second information about god we're teaching faith this morning as a law that activates the supernatural the bible says but without faith outside of faith it is impossible to please him why because of this information that whoever comes to god must believe that he exists and then number two that he has a name called a rewarder it's not what he does it's who he is that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him in other words don't come to god hoping you will get something don't come to god hoping he may give me there is a level of certainty and confidence that god is called a rewarder so every time i come the proof that i met him is that i never go back empty he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him not a giver a rewarder a rewarder means he gives you what you seek a giver means he gives what he has a rewarder the bible says he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him you know many people in church pastor teach about faith we teach a lot about faith and um, we do our best to communicate what we know to be faith but our results clearly show that many people do not understand the subject of faith because for many believers respectfully speaking our boundary of the understanding of faith is just declaring and hoping that we'll see no that is that is a very minute part of the equation of faith the foundation of bible faith is revelation not revelation about your situation revelation about the god who will be the deliverer of that promise before you trust a man if i tell you to come and collect a hundred dollar bill your first assignment is not to come your first assignment is to vet my integrity you have to check whether i have the capacity so there are two things listen please faith in god is based on two qualities of god not all qualities of god there are just two qualities of god that are required as far as faith is concerned number one his integrity please write it down number two his ability believing god is based on the awareness of his integrity and then number two his ability ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the bible says now unto him who is able so it settles it once and for all that god is able there is never a problem with his ability he is able to do the bible says able to do not just able to speak there are men who are able to speak i can help you but they are not able to do so the bible says that god is able to do and then he says exceeding abundantly even above all we ask now the fearful part is above all we think you know how vast your mind is your mind can think dimensions that will surprise you and the bible says that is it does not scare god he has the ability to allow your mind stretch itself and says is this all you can think i am still god above it so when your requests don't seem to come it is not 
an issue of God's ability because sometimes you see we look at the magnitude of that which we desire God to deliver to us and um, sometimes out of pity we say God okay it looks like you can't go this far okay so I come down to your level and God says the problem is never my ability so two things the integrity of God God does not lie he can be trusted number two God is El Shaddai you know what that means the multi-breasted one he sustains the power to make everything that needs to be captured in your life for a fruitful Christian life available to you this is the foundation of Bible faith just believing God arbitrarily does not bring faith you have to vet his integrity the Bible is a compendium of God's integrity his dealings with men through several dispensations to the end that we can study and see the consistency that he is believable that you can trust him the bible archives men and women who trusted god in time past now faith is hebrews 11 says the substance of things hoped for it calls it the evidence of things not seen it says for by it the elders obtained the elders obtained the elders obtained a good report it says through faith we understand that the cosmos the worlds were framed by the word of god then it begins to list all of these exploits that were done by faith if you are going to partner with the realm of the spirit to produce possibilities in this life you will have to understand the law of faith there are no guarantees in life your guarantee is the integrity of the one who sent you we live in a world where we are obsessed with guarantees you have to sign that you will be there for me you have to sign that you will not fail me you have to sign that our discussion will not change eventually unfortunately this world does not have guarantees your guarantee is the integrity of the one who sits upon the throne so he can send you and say go to us and not tell you what to do there and yet you go knowing that when you arrive there he will speak we are weak because we do not trust God. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. So don't tell me you love him. I already know. Take him there and offer him upon a mount that I will show you. You've not shown me the mountain. Just start moving. When you get there, I will tell you. Bible says, if ye be the children of Abraham, then you will do the works of Abraham. Trust in God. I believe God are we together now so revelation now the end of your revelation about God should produce something in you the Bible calls persuasion please say after me persuasion we're defining the faith equation now that revelation leads to conviction or persuasion it was the apostle that said for I know whom I have believed he said and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day conviction what is conviction your depth of persuasion your unbendedness i know he will do it i know he will do it if he said i will lift you this year i know he will do it i take my eyes away from the temporary setbacks because i know he will do it conviction conviction supplies your staying power when the situations refuse to change conviction so you, you you can say no i know this god the reason why we vacillate in our trust and our convictions is because we have not had an encounter with the integrity and the ability of god you know the way god speaks pastor he does not speak like he's talking to men he speaks to men like he's talking to himself this is why it's very frustrating to hear god many people like to hear god but if you really hear god you will wish you didn't hear him so you will have an excuse to just live your life because hearing god has implications it would demand a responsibility on your part that you will need grace for for instance god will not say go and build that house god will say when it's complete let me know this is how God speaks. He does not talk to men like he's talking to men. He talks to men like he's talking to himself. 
so he will talk as if there is no process in the entire thing now you are crying over a bill of one billion naira two billion naira and god talks to you and never talks about the money he says ensure the house has space for children ensure it has a mission arm and you are saying lord this is not the issue we have architects in portacourt and god never talks about where the weakness is he expects you to trust him enough if ye being evil there is a name god is called abba abba means source it means sustainer it also means defender and the character of fatherhood according to god's teaching is giving if ye being evil know how to give so a father who does not give is evil are we together now i'm saying this because there are many of us who are wondering how will my destiny be built the dreams that I have, the visions that I have are mighty, they are enormous. And you begin to stress yourself, putting a burden on your uncle he was not designed to supply. And get you are getting angry at people everywhere. Listen to me, save yourself that stress. There is a God in heaven who has integrity and ability. Every miracle looks impossible till it happens. Whether you need five naira or five million is still faith that will produce it. So in the realm of the spirit, it doesn't matter whether what you have, whether you reduce it or increase it, it makes no difference. It is still faith that will bring it. Please understand what I'm sharing with you this morning. And then you will no longer be afraid of the future. Every man you see whose life has become enviable today had no guarantees anywhere. There was no bank, no uncle, no nothing, no. Men went like madmen at the instance of the, the word of the Lord. Men went to virgin lands that they did not know anything about. Can you believe God enough? Apostle, I came to Port Harcourt. It's not my fault. I had a dream. God said, come here. Now I'm here. And look what God is making out of my life. We're talking God, the creator of the ends of the earth. The one who has said, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. There are attributes of God that when you know, the devil cannot speak to you again. The devil manipulates your gaps in your understanding of God and he plants seeds based on attributes of God you do not know. The prodigal son knew something about his father that no matter what it is i know that my father loves me and he said i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say unto him father i have sinned against you and against heaven and i am not worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your servants smart man he knew the father will never take him as a servant it's just a diplomatic way of saying i'm sorry there is something about God that if and when you know, even when you have a dream that negates it, oh dear, I wish I had time. I hope you know that the realm of the spirit cannot be made manifest until you receive and agree with whatever is there, including your dream. If I have a dream today, for instance, and I see myself maybe losing out in life or failing, I can get up believing it has happened. No, the dream is seeking for your permission. Listen, listen. At the expense of your eternal salvation, God still seeks for your permission to come into a life he created. What else should not seek for your permission to come? You know, the way the devil has made us believe is like he has the ability to veto anything. No, he's a master of the sense realm. He knows how to manipulate spiritual realities if God can be polite enough to knock at the door of your heart and wait till you open it then that dream can wait then that oppression can wait they all knock you just don't know they are knocking they knock by acting they are in your life already so your fear allows them to come in goodness how did we get here let's go back to what we're discussing faith are you blessed this morning already 
so conviction everybody say conviction yes you need conviction i believe god i believe god i know he said this now watch this the next step you take when you are convicted please understand this the end of conviction in fact is knowing the participatory role you have to play in actualizing that spiritual reality now please wake up if you're sleeping because this is where believers have been cheated for many years they think all it takes to the equation of faith is to believe god and that's it you believe god well done but you will never see it manifest there is always a participation between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm to get anything transported from the realm of the spirit to this realm please never forget it is not all up to god and it is not all up to you deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above um you know high above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you joshua 1 verse 8 this book of the law it says shall not depart from out of thy mouth it says but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do to do to do not just to say faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what he commands that is attached to the promised for instance the bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty claiming the promises of god and claiming you are blessed without understanding the participatory role will only be you mocking yourself are we together every dimension of possibility we seek to transfer from the realm of the spirit has exact conditions the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to open you up to the dimensions the requisite level of obedience you need to know what to do good master when poor people came to jesus they said help us when wealthy people came they said good master what should i do to be saved they knew that it, it there has to be responsibility attached good master what should i do there, there has to be a posture that i take are we blessed apostle i desire restoration in my life there is a provision restoration restoration in the bible has always been based on discerning the prophetic voice that you need to approach to speak to you it is the prophetic that controls restoration according to scripture your assignment is to locate the prophet sent not the prophet available the prophet sent there are words that are spoken there are words that are sent the word that delivers is the one sent. He sent forth his word, not spoke forth his word. There were many widows in Zarephath, the Bible says. So Elijah passed some and greeted them and they greeted him back because he was not sent to them. He went to the one he was sent to. It is not just every available anointing that helps you. It is the one sent to you. Discerning it now is your own assignment. But when you do find it, then restoration can come. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. They met the right prophet and he said, where fell it? He threw a stick and it came up. If they didn't have that miracle, they will write a theology that God cannot restore. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you will do what you do. This season we need a Hallelujah. Listen to me. I will share with you a story. That I've not shared in many platforms many years ago I was in this city I dropped at number 23 Equerry Street 
nowhere to go nobody to see I stopped there with one bag and 800 naira that was it your city by faith when I was coming into this city yesterday tears filled my eyes when you see the end of faith it is glory help him please within a year what God had done in my life is something I will reserve for another time please do not tell me it's because I don't know anybody you are joking I'm not speaking nonsense I know what I'm saying somewhere in this city the Lord gave me an instruction to give everything that I had I carried everything put it in one bag dragged it and dropped it in the church and went back as though I was returning from a funeral we are here for you come and Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.